Welcome back. Today we're going to do one of the most popular flies in the shop. This is the Mini Dungeon. Uh, this thing really has taken off. It's gone crazy. And I want to address a couple things about that. Uh, part of the reason it's gone crazy is that, you know, we, we've had this huge trend in flies just getting big, 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 big. Everything's bigger. And, and we kind of lost track. Uh, you know, you're seeing a lot of people are just convinced that if they have a big fly, they're going to catch the big fish like that's some magic. And it's not necessarily true. Frequently, profile is more important than anything you've got in that box. I don't care. There's just days, low light, low light penetration, cold water. There's a lot of things you can put fish off and not want to really get crazy and chase. But the low profile and the more bait fishy imitations, they kind of got lost for a while. I mean, just in the kind of the push of getting everything really big. And, you know, we kind of lose sight of the, that there's millions of fish taken on you know black nosed dace and a gray ghost and stuff like that the traditionals forever but uh and this and then and the mini dungeon was kind of one of the first ones uh well we had the mini tnas and we had the mini barely legal and stuff like that and, but more bait fishy this is the first smaller sculpin and there were ones before this too obviously you know the the mccune sculpin and uh mike's peck minnow there's a lot of really good uh Man, I can't think. There's a, there's a bunch of them. But at any rate, we took that, you know, the dungeon being as popular as it is, we took that and we sized it down. I'm going to go through kind of just kind of a couple things. When I sized it down, I took some of the stuff out too. Uh, as I got smaller, I just couldn't, I, I just didn't think it needed some of the stuff the bigger one had. I took the flash out of it. We kind of scaled the bodies down, obviously. Took, uh, I put a pair of legs in it. I don't have legs in the back. I don't have, I only got two in the front. I don't really even know if you need the legs. Uh, I, I I can't remember the first one that I tied, if it had it or not, but I don't, I put them in there. I mean, surely there isn't a leg hanging out the front end of a sculpin, so I'm not sure it's even needed. But, but you can see it's pretty scaled back. It gives a great profile. It's got a nice broad head. So getting into the fly proper, uh, go through the things that we use. We use, the, they're on 2460s. You've got a size 4 and a size 6. If you want to make it slightly bigger or just have a little bit more gap, you, you know, double 4s is fine. I, I did the original one on a, a 6 and a 4. We're going to have a stack tail as always. We're going to have a... Um, <clears throat> this particular one is the natural, and that's the first one I ever tied it in. And, and the colors just correlate with the, the big ones. But this one's got the tan or I mean a cream uh, under wing that's going to have a stack tail and we're going to have chickaboo or uh, what do you call that stuff grizzly marabou they changed the name on that stuff going to have grizzly marabou is going to be the top wing the accent wing the sculpin are really modeled they, they have they're not a solid color you look at one up close you'll see it's got it's got yellow and browns and creams it's got it's got a bunch of colors in it I love this chickaboo or, or uh, grizzly marabou and I'm going to use that for the accent I'm going to show you two other options because on the on the production ones that MFC does they're using this uh, mini mar barred mini marabou this stuff's incredible it has really come a long ways when it first came out a little too wide a bar there were things I didn't like about it they're dialing this into a to a real science and actually it's really hard I tied one earlier and it was pretty hard to tell the difference between the natural and the but I did the original and natural. Another thing you can do is a chickaboo or a grizzly marabou patch. These things are huge. You can get all kinds of hackle. I mean, your, your regular chickaboo here and on the sides. I mean, I pulled a couple feathers off. You can see a little bit bigger. And, they, and these all vary. They're natural. But, man, you get a ton of this stuff for like 20 bucks for this whole patch. Pretty, It's pretty cool. I, I, I use some of those, too. Like I said, I have, I have these right here. Sometimes it's just, you know, just which one you like. So, but it's another option. I'm going to do this one with the original Grizzly Marabou or Chickaboo if you, when it first came out. And then <clears throat> the other thing I'm going to use for body that's pretty standard on, on most of my bugs is the, this is the UV Tan uh, Ice Dub. I use Ice Dub on all the dungeons except for the Menages, that, which are the triples that have the, they have the UV Polar Chenille. Uh, and this just holds suit for all the flies. It would, you know, when I went through and I standardized them, whites, you know, the, the, all the colors around the big ones are the same as they're on the minis. <clears throat> so we need that. 
Uh, the eyes. <clears throat> I'm going to be clearing my throat a little more than normal today. I've been working really hard, you know, building that addition, unlike Johnny and Jeremy who just kind of hang out. <clears throat> so I have a lot of sawdust up there. But anyway, I'll try to keep it to a minimum. The eyes are going to be small, double pupil lead. Love these things. It, I know, it, you know, I think it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, five or six rocks and there's no paint left on these things anyway, but I just dig the way these things look. They're really cool. And so lastly, we're going to have the legs as far as components. This is going to be the, um, forgot the name of the orange tip, the root beer orange tip. Uh, this is the one I, I just call this the Nancy leg because I put this on my Nancy piece. The, I use the olive version of this and then this color. I love this thing. I, I like the two-tone effect it gets. And I put a little bit of that tip in there of that orange. I don't know. It just kind of looks cool. Uh, that'll be that. And then obviously we're going to have the hair. And I'm going to just do a little bit about the hair right now before we go on. You know, I'm always talking about hair. I got a lot of tutorials on it. And we're always talking about the bigger hair and the distance between here and here and the, the curve to the hair. <clears throat> but I want you to see the difference in the thickness here. These are both really good hair. They're just early season, late season. And this one's a lot thicker. When you get into the smaller flies, you can really build a lot bigger head, a lot of a fuller looking head with the same amount of hair, but you get more hairs per spin. And the same amount, you're going to get almost twice as much because the hair is thinner, right? And so you build a better head on the smaller flies. If you did this on a big fly, it'd get a little bit too bulky. But on these small ones, I like a little bit finer hair, not quite as coarse. If you look at this one up, can you see that up close, Jeremy? Mm -hmm. Does it look pretty? You can see the difference. There's, and it, it, it makes a difference on these smaller flies to use the smaller hair, the thinner hair, not the smaller. <clears throat> and then last uh, component, same as always, 0.38 on this. I'm going to use small gold wire for my counter rib. You'll see this has kind of went crazy here. That's what happens when you don't hook it in there and uh, you drop it, and so it's all going crazy. Kind of like that dog barking. And last but not least, I don't think I forgot anything, is going to be the hackle. And I'm going to show you something. The original one I did was on was out of Cree hackle. I really like this. It's a it's a low grade. It's a tires grade uh, neck, but and it's a Cree, and I really like it. And I want to show you it obviously. Well, I think most people that buy these necks, especially when you start buying high dollar Cree and stuff like that, you sit around hoarding the damn things forever. And they probably rot before you use them all up. And for some reason, because they're so rare, nobody wants to use them. But if you look, especially on your lower grade, like this is a, this is a pro grade, that's the bottom, you know, of it. And, and that comes from not only the sweet spot, but the consistency. And you see more of these uh, brown badger feathers kind of stuck in there. This is, you're going to use these up here anyway. This is a great spot if you're one of those feather hoarders to come in and grab some of these that are two-tone that, and use them up. You know, it gives you still, you can usually they're half on the, usually the end, the tip is where you still get your barring and they'll have a little of this brown. So I pull them out like this one I pulled uh, in advance. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's, you know, you can see it's, it's uh, if I didn't drop it, you can see it's half, coachman brown badger in here and then it turns into the cree right well you're not going to use that on your dry fly so it's a great place for you to use it here but what i want to show you is and jeremy asked me this the other day and the difference between uh medium ginger or dark ginger this is a dark ginger dark ginger grizzly and a cree and the difference is is it's slightly darker the it's a really dark brown on the cree but you take this is a very common neck right and so and this is this is a great neck for doing what we're doing here. This is a great, you know, for dry fly color in here or, or, you know, neck. But up here, you don't really use these that much. So this is a great spot to use that up so you don't have these necks that are half used. I'm going to use the, and, and like before I go on, I'm going to use the Cree because I, that's just what I did originally. But when you look at these, especially when you get up towards the end, there's really not that much difference in these necks. It's just, it's really rare to get a really clean, I mean, to get a go a platinum or a silver even grade Cree is really hard to come by. But when you look at the difference, it's slightly darker. You buy a dark ginger and it's almost identical. 
<clears throat> and they're really sexy. They, I just like the, they're, they're, it's the color contrast. It's just, they're, they're just really unique, and so I use them as much as I can uh, on these flies. So we're going to start with the 2460 back hook is a number six. We're going to have uh, the six. And like I said, if you want to do a double, if you want to do double fours, I don't know. You can if you want. It doesn't make much difference. There's, there, there's not that much more weight. You don't get that much hook. Uh, generally on these little ones, man, when they eat it, they eat the whole thing. That thing just goes away. So it's not really, it, I don't think it's that important to have a bigger hook in the back. So I think it covered everything there. The dungeon, like every one we're going to do, this is, if you do a full-size dungeon, it's the same thing. We're going to take this fly, make sure you leave space for the head. Unlike the regular dungeon, we're not going to have uh, rubber legs, so you can maybe leave a little bit less room there. So, <clears throat> like with all of them, uh, we're going to start with, I'm going to two-tone them. I like to two-tone a lot of these on my own, even on the ones, even on like the Especially on the olive dungeons, I'll throw a yellow underneath there a lot of times. But on all my naturals, I two-tone the tails. Remember, don't put this in your mouth. Keep a, something wet on the table like a sponge so you can do that. <clears throat> you get crazy. So we're going to take this as always. We're going to wet it so we can see everything real, real clean. You can see how long things are. You're going to butt this up to the eye of the hook. You want it to be at least the length of the hook. And like I've told you many times... If you're going to air here, air long. You do not want a stubby little tail. You want a nice wispy tail that swims and, and undulates back there. So if you're going to air, air long. So, <clears throat> like always, I'm going to start my taper. I'm going to build it on the side. I'm going to come up here just shy of where I started the, my thread so I don't rush the head. Move back here. If you are a super freak about time, you could tie this one in right now when you're up there. I like to do it that way. I like to come back, get a nice clean. And this is what I was talking about earlier, about how when you look at a model, a sculpin, how modeled it is. Actually, that's the name of one, a model sculpin. <clears throat> There's slimy model. There's a bunch of sculpin. But when you look at it, it's, it's got a very distinct barring in it. And so what I'm using this for is basically a toner. It's going to start that whole... You can see when I lay it up there, it's, I'm going to lay it right on top, but it's going to start that model look. It's going to really build that, that impression into the fly. So I'm going to make this exactly the same length as the other one. Again, <clears throat> I'm going to come up the back side. I'm going to work up here, building a subtle taper as I go forward. Now I'm going to take my chaos wire. Again, is what happens when you drop this. There's a little, I, I did a thing on this, I don't even, it was, I was just showing people earlier in a, vid, in a different video that this comes off on these unis, and you, I had a guy, I hooked it in there, I've been doing it for so long, a guy at a, at a show said, oh my God, I can't believe I've never seen that. I said, your wire must look like this all the time, because uh, you'll see guys with rubber bands around it, but I was tying a couple days ago and dropped this one, and it went before I hooked it in there, and this is what I'm dealing with every since. So I'm going to take a print, and this is, by the way, this is small uh, gold. I, I'm going to tie it in. I, I stayed up here up front, and we're going to take this, and we're going to tie it in on the, the away side of you. Okay, give it two or three wraps. Fold it back over. <clears throat> and we're going to continue to build that taper. I brought this... You can't really see this fine thread, but I brought it to the halfway point, and I've got there, and then I'm going to continue back with the rest of it. And obviously that's more for, that's structural integrity. That's getting that back to the point where you couldn't possibly pull it out. That's all we're trying to achieve with that. So that's going to be our counter wrap wire when we put our hackle in. We're going to, <clears throat> we're going to use the UV. I'm going to do it in a dubbing loop, and... This is, when we get into a fly this size, <clears throat> if you didn't want to use a loop, I don't think it'd be that detrimental for you. Uh, I, I just, I love them. I, I do dubbing loops on little dry flies even. But if you didn't want to, you could twist dub this one on your thread, I think, pretty easily. 
I, I, don't, I just don't, I like the control I get out of these. And so just like always, we're gonna build, while I'm sitting here, I'm building a subtle triangular taper to this dubbing. I'll put it up here so you can see it. It's thinner at the top, thicker at the bottom. Don't get too caught up in this right now. We can adjust this once it's in your, once it's in the loop. You can look at it right here. So we're gonna, I don't have wax on this thread. I want it, I want to be able to move it back and forth. And so now I can look at it and go, okay. And I think you can see that, that might be a little high. <clears throat> it's just, it's thinner down here and thicker up there. So I'm gonna spin that. You'll be able to see it easier in a second. <clears throat> so now you can see it's a slightly thick. We're just talking fractions here. We're just barely, it's just a little thicker at the front than it is in the back. But the overall effect, when you put all these things together, that's what you're looking for. It's gonna have the overall slightly wider at the front, the whole thing. Uh, sculpin in particular are a, they're a wedge man they are just like really skinny at the butt and then they go whoosh, just like that so building it in it just it, it makes you feel more confident with your fly so I've turned one turn of thread right there one turn of the dubbing just like always we're going to grab that tail and we're going to set it see how hard I set that never going to come undone third or fourth one I'm going to set it again and then we're going to start building our taper get right to the front boom <clears throat> so we've got a we've got a subtle subtle taper built already you can see it when you look over it just slightly wider in the front now I'm going to take the smaller of the two hackles and and, I, and I've said this many times I, I really like rooster hackle on my streamers I like the sheen I don't I don't put as much like schlopping and darker hen hackles and stuff on them I just like that little bit of iridescent. It's just just a little bit of accent, and it, it just looks better to me. I've, ha I've had people ask me about it being a little stiffer. Just make sure that it's long enough. Don't make your your hackles spiky. If you're tying woolly buggers, it shouldn't look like a dry fly hackle. It should look like it's marrying around the feather. So make sure it's long enough that it will lay back. And this these are so small, it, it's barely noticeable. <clears throat> but again, see this is that feather that's two-toned. You really wouldn't have much use for this other than that. And it's even half-toned here. That's fine with me. I'm going to tie it in right there. So I get, I'm get. i still going to get this, that Cree barring. That's grizzly barring, but uh, I come in here. I'm going to, I wanted to have just, and I want to make sure I had just, I still want to see some of that uh, bar in the front. So now, what do I got going here? So now I'm going to come in from the right side of the thread. I'm going to hook it like this. <clears throat> Get back here. Right shoulder. You tap the you tap the thread from your right side. Tap it into it. Do a, a figure eight. One right over the top of it. Now do two in front of it and pull. That will cinch that. Now that feather is completely locked. If you're using GSP doesn't hurt to put a half hitch right here <clears throat> now we're going to make one good clean turn right here and pull on it pull on it to make sure it's anchored make sure it doesn't it's not loose nice tight wrap now just start your turns back i may need a tweezy on this little short one get your hackle pliers hey second mistake in uh, 2018 Whoops, one, two, three, four, five. I was going to count those. It's a lot easier to go around your hook point with a hackle plier. All right, so the reason, I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but I leave that, I, I finish that wire on the top and away, so I get a complete half turn around. And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to turn it over what we're doing here. I'm going to release these. <clears throat> what we're doing is, that's why I leave it on the top when I start to get a nice tight, tie down when I come around but I want you to see what I'm doing here all right so I, I went halfway around the body and I had this in my in my hackle pliers and I catch that hackle stem that's all we're doing we're going to counter wrap this and this wire is going to hold this in place and it's going to make it virtually bomb proof because a fish is if it breaks a stem it's still going to be underneath this multiple times and so now we're just going to move forward at the same angle that we came back with make one good turn right there <clears throat> break your wire off 
and just clean this up. We still got to put a wing on here. So just clean it up. Give yourself a nice build. Come in here. Take that tip off. Now we're going to take the tail, or the wing I mean, and we want this to come into, this doesn't have to be huge, we want this to lay into about the third point. Can just continue this, this barring effect. We're going to take this about a third into the tail. All right, it's not supposed to go all the way past the, into the same length as the tail, about a third the length of the tail. So come in here and you're, feel free to manipulate this. Uh, man, I, I, I swear the, the number one mistake I see people doing when I'm just, we're out time doing seminars and stuff, people are afraid to stop and go backwards. They don't want to take their materials off. If it's not, look at it. Look it over, see if it's going a halfway, a third, whatever. And that's just random. That's my like. If you want it to go halfway, whatever. But make sure when you set it, it's in there. It's at least doing what you're what you want and everything's where it belongs dead on top <clears throat> trim it off get a nice clean head here I was talking I wasn't talking I was emailing with somebody the other day and they kept I always get questions about speed and and how do I build speed into it you build speed by constantly making things always the same always the same always the same and one of the things you can do there is if you want consistency, start counting the head wraps. When you come in here, now I'm going to do one, two, three, four. All right? The fourth one was the end. On a small fly, if you get so you can count all the head wraps on every one of you, if you're doing a dry fly, say it's a three turn, whatever it is, when you get in that habit, it makes you, it forces you to make sure everything's in the same place. So when this thing's all done, every time you see it, it's the same. And so when you if you just get used to doing that, you'll have more consistency and your flies will be more, your flies are better when they're more consistent because it's always the same. Obviously you're trying to accomplish the same every time with one that works and so once you've got it figured out, keep them the same. I always, you know, I, I, on my dry flies I have a count, on my regular I don't have a regular but say a, uh, an old, like in the old fashioned bucktails, this is a aggravated assault this is a 1970s bug but it would be hard to count that one but if you just get used to that it's just one more thing for consistency there's no random it's like you get there and you do okay that's right and it'll just improve the overall fly completely so now we're going to take the 0.38 uh, wire <clears throat> well we're going to put the eye on first I've made that mistake enough times we're going to put the wire <clears throat> I'm going to use the small double pupil. Those are lead. Don't put them in your mouth. One more thing. I tell people this all the time. Take your fly and check it. I'm going to do this head different than the commercial style. I'm not going to, I'm going to leave. Jeremy's going to take a picture of this fly, that the absolute original dungeon, the first one ever tied. And the eyes were back, and I so I could spin the head in front of it. And on these little ones, that's how I do my own. I don't. I might put a little little tiny bit of hair underneath here, but I'm not going to do a stack and a stack. I'm going to put the collar on, and then I'm going to do one spin of hair in front of it. It's too small to deal with four turn or four different stacks of hair. And so if you put the eyes back a little bit, you can do one in front of it, and you don't have to deal with that. So make sure take your sample fly. Uh, this is one I tied earlier and screwed up so but it's you can see where the, and we're gonna set that so I'm, I'm gonna have room to spin my head in front of it hey, where'd you go to like with all of them I'm gonna do one two three I'm gonna spin it over I'm gonna it's not tight at all I'm not trying to set these eyes right now oops spin over little tiny things okay then just kind of take a peek at it and make sure that you have space I'm just looking to see all right if I've got room to do a full spin up front and I get a collar on there you know this is the size hook head I'm looking for and so I just make sure it's where I want it you can manhandle this thing right now you still got time to play 
around because we've got to put the wire on there. <clears throat> that one's a little bit not quite far enough ahead. All right. Now, everything just goes into a smaller version of your original of the big ones here. So, on some of these, uh, on the minis, it's kind of a I wouldn't say that you're you're not looking for the same size fish or anything like that, but on these small ones, running the eye, how I, I'm going to do it the way I've always do it. I'm going to run the wire through the eye and come back and build a little taper. It, it, you may not have to do it. If you were to wrap this really tight over the top and super glue it, I don't think you could pull it out. I don't. And like I said earlier, usually when they eat these little flies, they eat the whole damn thing. It's just, I mean, they're, they'll be gone, right? And so... If you don't want to go through the eye and come back, uh, that's fine too. So, like always with the wire, give it a good kink. You're trying to get that little bit of a dent right there so you can put it in there. It keeps your wires apart so you don't cross them back here. You can keep this relatively close, this connection. It, it doesn't have to be way back there. It just needs to, it just needs to wiggle. So. We eliminate, this is another thing we eliminate on this. We don't put the bead, I don't, put the bead on here. Uh, I suppose you could if you wanted to. I just, I don't, the, the original bead, I don't know if I've ever discussed that. The original bead, way back when we first tying these, it was, it was mostly Russ Madden and I were sitting around when Russ worked for me at the Troutsman in Michigan. And we were, it was totally experimental. All this stuff we were doing, we didn't know anything about it. We're just, we're just coming up with the different ways to do it. And I saw, I, I put a skirt, is what we called it, a flashaboo in there. And the flashaboo, uh, and we we didn't have the bead, and the flashaboo get hung up in the in the articulation wire. Actually, we were using mono back then, but it would get wrapped in it. And we put, and then the thing would wrap around. We put the bead in originally to kind of keep that stuff from getting stuck in there. Then we realized it made it a little bit tighter, and boom, all of a sudden everything has a bead in it. But it had a purpose. Well, with this, I don't have the flash of it, so I'm not worried about it. And it's pretty tight. It's not back very far, so it's not really a big deal to me to have it, to have it a little closer. So, take just like always, take this, run both of them through. Just take your thumbnail. I've messed around with these eyes so much now, I, don't, I think they're pretty close to where I want them. You know, see how loose these things are? It doesn't matter. We're, we're going to do this with our thread, or with our wire, I mean. So I've got the, I've gone back to as close as I can get it with the thread. And now, and I'm going to, I'm going to turn this to you so you can see. And this is how we always set them. I, I do one turn, I get as close as I can. All right, you can see the wire on the bottom. And now I did as close as I could coming this way. And then I came one time around here and hooked the wire. Now I want you to see what I do. I, I'm not going to try to, I'm going to pull back from to the right and anchor. I don't know if you can see that. Is that a good angle or uh, I'm, I'm <clears throat> pulling to the right. And all I'm trying to do is push that wire up tight against the ones I came as close as I could here. Now watch what I do. I'm going to go underneath the eye underneath the hook and I'm just going around the eyes like this all right I'm not going around the hook I'm going under the hook every time and now I'm going to pull it again to the right I'm holding the eyes right where I want them and that just what I'm doing is I'm simply cinching that wire underneath there now those eyes are virtually on you can't I mean you can move anything you can't do a chin up on these things but I mean it's 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 as tight as you're going to get them now I'm going to cut this wire I grab Johnny's scissors again. He loves when I use his stuff. <clears throat> and I'm cutting his, I'm taking the tips of his fine scissors and I'm cutting this wire. And I cut it at the halfway point, roughly, so that I, again, I've des I'm designing the taper in advance. I'm just using all the other pieces to help build it. So we're going to come back here. Now we're going to put, I don't put the, mer or the flashaboo in this one, but I still do the cover. Uh, not a... a just want a little bit of a wing sticking back into this one, kind of trying to make it all look like one piece instead of two different bugs. So I'm going to just lay this. 
Again, I'm going to take this and put it about in the third of the, I don't want it going over top of the wing. I just want it to start. I'm building layers into this and the layers, it, it, it's, it's important because what the layer effect does <clears throat> is it, when you look at a sculpt and it's modeled, right? And it, it has multiple reflective values to it. So it may say it starts kind of creamy pearl and then it gets a, a creamy a tan and then it's got a brown in it. And when you start building these layers into your fly, when the fly is wet, it kind of emulates that. It just kind of gives it a three dimensional view or appearance, I mean. And so this one, just a third, a third back into it again. Now again, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to wrap that right to where my wires ended. I'm going to cut this off. Move back up here, add my next piece of wire. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Put it on the top away from you. Give it two secure wraps, three. Come back here. And now I'm going to bring that taper right to where I cut off my uh, marabou. Grizzly marabou. And here's, you know, I showed you early on this. Let's go right to that. We're going to have it on the top, and so I'm going to get that three-quarter or half a turn around so I know it's really secured. I don't want it to roll with the body. <clears throat> nice and tight right there. Don't go crazy. When you're using GSP thread, you, you can pull so hard with this thread that you can even break wire. So don't, don't, you know, pull on it like it's a stuck truck in the mud. Or in my case here, it would be a stuck truck in the snow. So, so far so good. This is a pretty fast fly when you get right down to it. I'm going to hook my back fly in there. <clears throat> so, go back to our dubbing. One of the things that's the nice thing about dubbing in loops is you see this right here. When I did my loop, I didn't, when, when you cut it, if there's any excess, you pull it out, it's still fine. You can put it right back into the next loop, so you really don't ever waste anything. Not that wasting a buck's worth of dubbing's a big deal, but you can save it. So this one, I want a little bit thicker, just slightly. We're building, we build a little bit of taper, same thing. I've got my triangle here, triangle taper. And again, you're going to be able to do this in the in your loop right now. You can start shaping it again. If you didn't get it quite right, this one's fine. It's got to be wider here. Put it in the middle, skinnier at the bottom. Super fast. Two turns. We've got a thicker here, thinner there. We're going to come around. One complete turn. Grab everything. <clears throat> when you work with these, make sure that the loop that part right there is up. If you work with it down, you'll slide off every now and then. Okay, we did one really tight turn and cinched it in. Tight turn, fourth one. Tight turn. Finish off at the eye. <clears throat> I'm going to advance that just a little bit. I was going to show you something earlier. All right, I want it to go right to the base of the eyes. And I was a little short right there when I, I just needed to open it up a little bit. And I'll show you why I'm going to turn this over here. If you, if you take it right to the base here, you won't have as when you, if you do it in a single spin when we do our head, you won't see back there. And it, you could even, you could even, if, you, if you're short, don't worry about going, if you, I'm fine right there, I don't need any. But if you were short, just take a little bit, touch it, you know, twist dub it, and put it right, this, this one's fine, you wouldn't have to put a thing, but just fill that gap right there. See what I mean? I didn't need to, it wasn't there, I'm just, but if you do, if you can see a bunch of that behind the eye, just fill it in, just, it, it doesn't matter if you, if you, you don't have to do another loop, just fill it, but you want to have this taper built, you want it to go right behind the eye, now we're going to do one spin in front, and we'll cover everything up, we aren't going to have to do anything else to it, and you know, it's just, it's just a, cosmetic finish so make sure it's there now we're going to take <clears throat> now we're going to take the hackle the the full cree and i'm going to you should have a little bit longer hackle now 
just slightly. Everything's a taper. And we come in here. Same thing. We're going to take this hackle stem. We're going to butt it into the thread on the right. Come around, do a figure eight. Do two for turns in front. Pull it. Let it go. Now, this is a longer hackle. I won't need my hackle pliers. Grab your wire. Get up there. Again, come around. This side, I, there's the wires there. I come around. I hook that hackle tip. Keep it nice and tight in your, in your left hand. And then just accelerate through this. Don't worry about... Try to make the same number of wraps as you go forward as you went this way, roughly. But don't worry about catching these. The faster you go, the less you'll catch. Two good complete wraps around it. You can break your wire off and then just catch it again with your, with your thread. Make sure you get that really well down, set down. Now we're going to take, this gets one, one, uh, things are getting crazy back there. It <clears throat> gets one leg, not a pair. And, and like I said earlier, I, I don't even know if you need these legs. I, I really, sometimes I wonder why I put it on there. But uh, I did it on the original. It just, it fishes like a champ. <laughs> it, it's a great bug as it is. And uh, so if they break off when I'm fishing it, I, I'm not that worried about it. Um, but I don't think it's really, I don't think they're that necessary, but they look cool. So make sure they're the same length. We've got one turn of thread. You've heard me say this a hundred times. We got one turn of thread. I have no pressure on this thread. Now I'm going to come back. I went from right to left. I'm at one turn over top. I'm going to go right back over top of that again. I doubt you can see that, but there's an X over the top of it. There's one, so I don't have no pressure. One, two, then I, I'll point it so you can see it. Or not, and I pull, and because it does it simultaneously, the legs, the, the pressure's even all ways around. They never move. They're right where they belong. Done. <clears throat> Now we'll take our final wing, and by the way, this four set of wing, or wing, wing, cover, wing, is how I do my own dungeons, even the big ones. Um, it's not, the, the production ones aren't all done that way, it's just, it's how I do my own. All right, this wing I want to go into the one-third part of the, the cover connection right there. So this is going to go one-third into it. Just like with all hackles, there's a shiny side and a dull side. It's this, I want the shiny side up. Kind of messed that up. All right. He's going to stand up for a second. Take your straw. You've seen me do this before, just a regular straw. Cut it to the length you want. Cut it lengthwise so you can open it up. We'll get all this stuff covered up and hanging back here so we can put our, hat, our head on. <clears throat> so we've got all of our wings in place. We've got our legs in place. Now we're going to take our deer hair. Uh, again, I like the uh, thinner hair now. Not, not really quite. What, it's not that critical. But I mean, you'll get a cleaner looking head if you use thinner hair. You'll get more hairs per spin. And so it just builds in. Because we're not building a lot of bulk with this. We're trying to build a silhouette, but we're not trying to build... Uh, bulk or we're not trying to make it really hard either we want it to be a soft head that's built a lot because what the soft head does allows water to get into it builds the profile but doesn't build the lift or the bulk or the buoyancy I should say uh, so it's not like a popper head so just like always we're going to cut the hair we got a pretty good piece of hair here put it in your hand flare it just spin it in your hand enough so we can clean it. We've got to get that stuff out of there. I'm going to get all the... This is really good hair. It's got virtually nothing in it for the, the, the fur. <clears throat> We're going to take a, a pretty good chunk of this stuff because you want, a, you want a broad collar. You want a nice thick collar, even on these little ones. Remember, the collar, it, it has multiple functions. First and foremost, 
collars were designed collars are designed to look like pectoral fins if you look at a sculpt and I'll, I'll, I think I've got a really good photo I can show you uh, if you look at a sculpt and it's got these super broad really thick I mean almost as thick of its body pectoral fins that's what this is originally supposed to be it's supposed to be those pectoral fins sticking out the side but as an added bonus to you when you're tying this thing sound like the Ginzu knife guy right there as an added bonus you get two for the price of one as an added bonus, what it does is it stabilizes your fly, right? It just keeps the fly from rolling upside down. So you want a nice thick collar on this thing, but you're really trying to present a pectoral image. So it's supposed to be pectorals. So we're going to have a nice thick collar. I'm using the J-Nick stacker. I love these things. The beauty of this stacker, A, it's one piece. It doesn't, you don't have two pieces rolling around. But you can roll it out and you can see if it's all stacked. I love this thing. It comes in here. If it's not right, stack it. And just and you, the other thing is, is when I pull this out of the stacker, it's going in the direction I want it to be. Set that down. It's one piece. It doesn't go really rolling anywhere. So now we're going to double check that everything's right. It's clean. We're going to come in here and we're going to take these and we're going to make them one third of the body length. And again, if you go back to the natural, you go back to the sculpt, and you'll see the pectoral fins are about one third of the body length of the in the natural. But this is more about presenting a, an image. You know, it's like a it's a facade that it's just their their pectoral fins sticking out the side. So we'd go in here and we bump it about a third of the length of the body. I'm gonna come in here, cut it nice and square, <clears throat> spin your thread to the right, so that you you spin your thread for a reason you spin your thread to the right so that because we like things that go to the right but it lays the thread to your left it, it pushes it back automatically so when we go in here to try to catch just this little bit of hair we aren't fighting it. it's not up here we're not trying to get our thread back like this you just put your hand up there and it leans right into it it just it makes it a lot easier so now we're going to come in here and we're going to grab about a sixteenth of an inch what roughly you can see what's there, and we're going to start pulling down on it. And as soon as you see the thread is disappearing, you can see it right there. Can you see that, Jeremy? Can you see the thread? Not really. Okay, from here, well, you, you'll be able to see it when you're looking at it. And you do not let go. Your thumb and your finger have a good grip. I mean, I've got a good grip on the body. So I'm not letting the hair work around the hook. I want it to stay on the top half. So you're looking at it. I got a good grip on the hair. I'm looking at it. The hair starts. I start to. The hair starts to go wrap around the thread, so it's disappearing. The thread is. I go as soon as I can't see it. I bring my second wrap and I pull the same way. I look at it. I can't see the thread anymore. Take your thumb, push down, and then secure it. All right. Put a third one on there if you want. And you can see I got a nice broad. I've got a nice where you push your thumb if it's not down where you want it push your thumb into it and when you look underneath there you should be able to see that the hairs ends in the middle it shouldn't be it shouldn't be way on each side of that it should be right on the halfway mark so you've got nice pectorals you, if it's not right I mean manhandle these things grab a hold of them and squeeze it get it where it belongs and so if it's if it's not right back the thing off people will not back their materials off if it's not right, stop and, and, and fix it right now. It's perfect, so we don't have to do anything. So here we go. We've got the hackle, and you're looking at or the, the collar, I mean. It's nice and clean. This, this straw is kind of pushing things around. And now, because, like I said, if you wanted to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm, I'm going to show you. And I don't want to, the reason I wanted this to be full up here is I don't like to put stuff behind it. If you're going to, if it bugs you, let me show you, you're gonna take like no hair whatsoever. You're gonna take this little tiny piece of hair and you can come in here if you want to, if you wanna cover this back <clears throat> and just put one turn of thread around it and pull it and be done with it. Don't, don't build a big chunk underneath here. Don't distort your body, I'm leaving it. I like it without it. Um, but if you wanted to, don't distort your whole body. Don't when you turn this over, you want to see that reflective value of that of the UV dummy. So now I'm going to take a pretty good pencil size 
or thereabouts chunk of hair start same thing start with it tip spin it clean it start with more than you need don't not twice what you need but maybe a quarter more than you need so that you can mess with it clean it get it nice and everything's where it belongs when you start to stack spin it out because this is going to be a legitimate spin it's not a set like that was for that hat for that uh, pectoral for the collar and so we're going to have a true spin here so you make sure it's clean because all that fur underneath there is what stops you from spinning well okay so now just like always with when we're working with deer hair we're going to put this dead in the center of what's left we're going to put one now I've got a hold of this in my left hand right I've got the tips here I've got one can you see the thread there Jeremy mm -hmm. okay the thread as I'm pulling down and I'm kind of working the hair around the hook and then I'm going to put a second one on and now I'm letting it really work and this is a half turn over top now you can see the hair on top I've got a half I got two and a half turns you can see the hair on top I'm going to spin it it does one complete turn and I can pull this I, I, I'll just break the hair in half if I keep pulling I'm, I'm done that means it's went around one time it's locked make it go around once don't let it go one and a half just keep practicing now I'm just gonna push this back just slightly so I don't trap any hairs I am NOT trying to pack that head I'm not trying to press this back and build tightness into that head I want it loose I don't want it really thick and tight it, it, that's if you watch you know this the really great hair guy watch Pat Cohen stuff and he's always packing this stuff because he's doing decorative stuff and he's making he's making dots and rings and different things well the tighter that hair is it, it is really tight when you trim it you almost can't see the hairs at all it's so packed in there tight it just it creates a great image it, it's a chalkboard you can I mean shit you look at you look at Cohen's stuff you'll see he can do um, I mean you'll see his frogs and his he's got fish that look you know like tropical fish it's because he's tightened that one well, it's because he's great but it, he's packed that in so tight that you don't see the hair anymore when he trims that stuff it's just like a flat slate I want to see the hair I want to see I want to I want to have just enough hair to create the actual image of the head of the the sculpin and nothing more but I don't want it to be so tight that it creates buoyancy to the fly and stops it from swimming or dropping in the water column so I'm kind of doing the opposite now I'm going to take a double-edged razor blade I do you know I said this in a lot of videos I've never cut myself I don't I'm not a fan of the, the razor blade holders I like to put them in my hand I like to be able to manipulate it how I want first thing I do on all of them is I come underneath here and I make a flat cut and I draw it like this just miss your eyes try not to hit the eyes because if you miss if you hit the eyes basically it just takes it takes the edge off these blades really quick you'll get a half dozen to a dozen flies per blade per side On little ones like this you'll get a dozen easy On bigger ones you probably a half dozen will start pushing the hair so then I come in and just build this taper the shape it's actually faster on the big ones you can just kind of push at I'm a little more hesitant <clears throat> so this one I got I've got my basic shape right now and now I'm gonna pull this out and I go right over top of the fly I pull the hairs out and I come in here and I go right over top can you see that there you go. I go right over top and I come from the back forward I can't see that there so I'm gonna put it in my hand here and what I'm doing is don't worry about any of this other stuff right now I'm making sure it's the same distance the same length of hair on this side as that side you don't want to have it really short on one side and long on the other it'll just turn the opposite direction so I come in here and I cut that and I get everything where I want it and then I go to the front and I just I just turn it over like this and I just put a round on it I mean everybody's different how they do this for me I just I have to do it in two or three steps I come from the top I look down I see I see where everything is 
and put things where I want them. But I always work from the top looking down. So I never, I, you always have, that way you always have the hook as your gauge. You can see the eye of the hook and you're going down the middle. You're trying to get it even on both sides. Okay. Come from the bottom, take a peek, look it over. Now, straw. The straw is on there to keep all that stuff out of your way, but it's also to keep you from cutting those legs in half. If you trim your, if you trim with those things, you'll find a lot of times you lob that leg off. <clears throat> if you're running your razor blade, because just touching it, man, you're done. So I'm gonna look at it one more time. Just double check everything's kind of where I want it. I would never, ever sit and do this and, and putz around like that. If that was a working fly, if I was going to go fish that thing, I'd have been done so long ago. I went, zip, 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 psh, done. I, I, you know, I'm, you're going to look at this thing, and so I'm going to make sure it's pretty clean. Come back in here because you're going to, Jeremy's got a close-up picture of it. But I wouldn't be messing with this too much if it was, if I was just going to go fish this fly, I... I'd still mess with it a little bit because you kind of just, you just do. But that's about the shape that I'm looking for on mine. I cut so you can see the bottom. But I'm just looking for this nice round shape. I've got this really thick collar. It's got a, by the way, if you're one of those people like I'm beginning to be right now where you sit and trim and trim and trim, you will have no head in a minute if you don't stop because you'll eventually make one bad cut and go, ah. And then you go to the other side, let it go. Let, get it to a pretty clean. That's a, pretty much exactly the shape I'm looking for in the heads. Uh, for me personally, you know, it's a little thinner. I was looking for that. Where's the commercial tie head over here? I had one sitting here a second ago. Right. Oh, here it is. It's underneath that pile. You can see this one's a little thicker, a little bulkier than mine is. I just... I'm just, I just build mine to about that size, uh, just how I do my own. The one I tied earlier, you can see it's the same, just a little, not quite as big as some of the other ones. Uh, and it's, it, you know, when it gets wet, it's not going to be that big a deal. You can see the wings are laying back. They'll all be one, two, three stacks. They'll go over each other. Last thing you want to do is you want to measure these legs so you can see. You don't want them hanging way back here. I like them to go into the tail a little bit. But I want to st keep a little bit of that orange. And so I'm going to cut these at the same length. I'm going to have them just a little bit of that orange so it lays back right into the tail, not past it much. That little accent, I think, looks really cool. I don't know. Again, I don't know if it really is that important to you or to the fly itself. Um, but that's the mini dungeon. This has been one of the pop... This is probably in the top three sellers we've ever had for flies. Flies that are big sellers mean something. It means people are catching fish over and over. You don't, a lot of flies can sell once. If they keep selling for years on end, it means people are catching fish on them. This has been one of my most versatile flies. This is another fly you can actually, you can, you'll see people fish these under uh, bobbers. They'll run them, they'll boondog them. They'll, they'll fish them on tight line. It's a great fly just, you know, as, a, as we fish them as a streamer, it's also a great secondary fly to have two in tandem. It's not very big, not very heavy. That's the mini dungeon. Hope that helped you out.